I still remember those cold steel handcuffs crushing the bones in my wrists as I was being led into a putrid paddy wagon. Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. Welcome to this episode of License to Live. My name is Dr. Jarrett Patton, and I am your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed in their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitch, uh, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe to Licensed to Live. And while you're there, please rate this episode and give me honest feedback so I make sure I provide you with the most up-to-date information about career and life changes. When I say dissed, I mean disengage, like, eh, this medicine thing is not what it's cracked up to be. Too much paperwork, too many insurers telling me what not to do. I don't even have enough time with my patients. Dissatisfied, like, I just don't feel like I'm living up to my full potential. This career simply isn't fulfilling. Disgruntled, like, being a doctor has taken too much of my life away. I am in debt up to my eyeballs for med school. And now how much more do they want to continue MOC? Or disenfranchised, like I was when I had my medical license temporarily suspended. Today is a solo episode, folks. So stay tuned. I have a note of inspiration with some tips that are going to help you get back started. And now a word from our sponsor. Emmett Hayes, the third coffee company, EH3, specializes in selecting 100% Arabica coffee beans from distinct coffee growing regions across the globe. EH3 Coffee Company offers an exclusive brand of organic coffee beans and blends. All coffee products are craft roasted to perfection which yields consistency and quality, taste, and optimal flavor. EH3's quest is to create an evolutionary coffee experience for every single customer, every single time. Get your coffee today at emmitscoffee.com. That's E-M-M-I-T-T-S-C-O-F-F-E-E dot com. I tell you what, you know, I enjoy my EH3 coffee these days. And you know how I do it? I drink it black. Yes, black. I've never taken black coffee before. I mean, I usually cover up the taste with sugar or creamer because the coffee really wasn't good enough by itself. But really, this one, I finally found a coffee which I can drink alone without anything to cover up the taste. It really is a pretty good coffee. So make sure you get some EH3 coffee. The response was so great when I made this post on LinkedIn that I had to bring an episode up for all you fire starters. You can find me at Dr. Jarrett, spell out the word doctor, J-A-2-R-E-1-T, there on LinkedIn and all of social media. So make sure you connect with me there. But the post was designed as just a quick word of inspiration about being on top and climbing up from the bottom. I mean, I literally had just left WABC radio station in New York and headed uptown to Rockefeller Center where my next event was located. And I went up to the rooftop. I literally pulled out my phone and recorded. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you that day. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but that wind was whipping. 
it was freezing up there and it had an incredible wind chill. In fact, my cell phone literally froze and shut down just after I took that video as I was trying to post it. Anyway, the post was about being on top of the world. It felt like I was on top of the world. The view from that rooftop was amazing as I stared off in a 360 degree view of all of New York City, the five boroughs and beyond, the incredible skyscrapers, Central Park, multiple bridges, even the surrounding countryside was visible. There were even a handful of colored leaves still on the trees I could see scattered in the distance. It was truly awe-inspiring. But being on top of the world, or at least feeling that way, is a great feeling. You feel accomplished. You feel proud. Your confidence is sky high. And there are many other effects that come along with this euphoric feeling. This feeling can come all of a sudden, like when you have a baby or get married or some other life milestone. However, as far as your career is concerned, there's usually a buildup to this feeling. And it usually comes after a lot of hard work. You spend countless years working your way up the top of your career ladder. You put in many years of training and education prior to that. After that much work, you feel like you deserve success at this level. I started feeling that way in my own career as my leadership role grew. Don't get me wrong. I still love to see my patients and families, but it was a combination of leadership and clinical work that really made me feel great. I've never felt more accomplished than when I became a board of trustee member of an eight hospital system in Pennsylvania while I was leading a medical staff of over 1,400 physicians. I started to feel like I was on top of the world then. My confidence was sky high. My morals were aligned with my mission. My leadership skills were accelerating while my clinical skills stayed sharp. I think that my own success felt like it led to more successes. I mean, I really thought it was fun. I still remember those cold steel handcuffs crushing the bones in my wrists as I was being led into a putrid paddy wagon. In other words, things can come crashing down in a hurry as you fall to the ground level. You have to listen to some of the first licensed to live episodes or read licensed to live the book if you need more details on the crashing. However, the point is that things can come crashing down in a fraction of the time it took to build, maybe even a fraction of a second. These crashes can come from legal actions, accusations, health problems, economic disaster, and many other reasons. Sometimes they are in your control, but most of the time they are not. Particularly when things aren't under your control, the quicker you can make that realization the better. This is not really a time to do a linear regression analysis on your recent life to determine where you went wrong. If there is a lesson to learn, learn from it and start to move on. This can be very difficult to master and you may need help getting through the situation. However, take the time to heal yourself physically and mentally and prepare for the road beyond this. After all, it doesn't really matter what the reason was in the end but just know that you need to move on. Starting from the ground up can be difficult, but by following the next few steps, you'll be well on your way to getting back on top of the world again. The comeback. Number one, strengthen yourself. Take the time to heal from your wounds. Make sure you are taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually. You'll never be able to make it back to the top if you aren't in prime condition. My journey back to the top began with a healthy dose of exercise, some counseling, and practicing my faith relentlessly. Number two, believe in yourself. If you don't believe in your own future destiny, nobody else will. Even if you are the only one to believe in yourself, it only takes one person to have a dream. Fortunately, in my case, there were many cheering me on for my comeback, but I knew that I needed to be my biggest cheerleader. Number three, Work hard. When you are working from a point that falls within your passions and dreams, it feels like you're hardly working. Align your vision with your values and your dreams will start to come to fruition. Note, do not work so hard that you undo step number one. (laughs) 
<laughs> I certainly have put in years of work to get to this level, but the rise to the top was much quicker and much higher than my first view from the top. So you have something to look forward to. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Most likely, if you haven't found yourself in a unique situation, someone else out there has been there before. There is somebody out there that can be your guide to your redemption. On my way, I used several coaches on my way back. I used their expertise, their experiences, and all of their works in between to help bring me back better than ever. Yeah, it took me some time because I wasted a lot of time. You know, sometimes we feel like we know everything and we can do everything ourselves. And well, it just doesn't work out that way all the times. Once I figured that part out, that doing it myself really wasn't the way out of the solution, it accelerated my recovery. Number five, have fun. Most of all, your rise back to the top will be an adventure. Enjoy it. I believe that all things happen for a reason and people aren't here on earth just to suffer and die. Keep in mind that once you are back, you will be better than ever and this whole experience strengthens you. Stop along the way. Look back where you started from. I know I sat back and enjoyed the fact that I have written and contributed to multiple books, been featured on national radio and television, in many magazines and print publications. I've won several awards and get to share my story with the masses through this very podcast. All of these things never would have happened if I didn't fall from the top. I know, I know. Your journey may still seem a long way off, but by following these steps, you will find your way back to the top in no time. Be patient, be persistent, and be prosperous. Licensed to live. Remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, or disenfranchised with their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to your favorite podcast player and subscribe to Licensed to Live. And while you are there, please rate this episode and give me honest feedback so I make sure I provide you with the most up-to-date information about career challenges and life changes. And make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. I tend to hang out there between episodes. In fact, that's what spawned the idea for this episode. You can find me everywhere at Dr. Jarrett. Spell out the word doctor. J A. Two R's, E, one T. See you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.